There are a lot of ways to write a paragraph. Journalists do it one way, novelists do it another. In this video, we will cover the basics of writing an academic paragraph. An academic paragraph needs to deal with a single topic or idea. You need to think of the paragraph as a unified and cohesive brick that will be put together with other bricks to build your essay. The basic structure of the paragraph is the same as that of an essay. Tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, tell them what you told them. The topic sentence is a controlling sentence in that it controls the whole paragraph. Everything in the paragraph serves the topic sentence. The topic sentence is almost always the first sentence in your paragraph. And when I say almost always, I really mean always. On rare occasions, it can be the second sentence. And even rarer, the last sentence. But if you are going to put it in any position other than the first, you need to have a really good reason for doing so. The topic sentence says what your paragraph is going to be about. Ask yourself this question. Why am I writing this paragraph? To show what? To prove what? To explain what? Your topic sentence is kind of the answer to that question. And make sure it's just one thing, a single idea. The single idea needs to be in your topic sentence. And it should be explicit. That means you gotta come right out and say it. Say exactly what the paragraph is going to be about. There is an exception to the be explicit principle. Sophisticated writers may opt on occasion to be less than explicit. But they will know these occasions and will respond accordingly. Generally, come right out and say exactly what the paragraph will show. The topic sentence usually has two parts, the topic part and the controlling idea part. The topic is simply the subject of the paragraph. Zombies, craft dinner, Romeo, Marlin's belly and the whale experience. And then there's the controlling idea. It needs to indicate what you will say or show or explain about zombies or craft dinner or about Marlin's belly of the whale experience. So when you add the controlling idea to the topic, you need to make sure that your topic sentence isn't too general. For instance, zombies are very interesting. This is too general. Your reader won't have a clear idea about where this paragraph is going. And if you actually tried to show what this topic sentence said you were going to show, the paragraph would be ridiculously long. Because yes, zombies are that interesting. So don't be too general but neither should you be too short or too narrow or too specific. If you are, your paragraph won't advance your argument. This topic sentence is not a topic sentence. It's basically a statement, and it doesn't require any support. This one is also too specific. This one is just right. The zombie has no supernatural qualities, but it doesn't have any superhuman ones either. Once you've decided on your topic sentence, make sure that your paragraph stays on topic. Most of your paragraph will be made up of sentences that support your topic sentence. In the body of your paragraph, you will discuss the idea put forward in the topic sentence. Academic paragraphs will often have a robust topic sentence, and this means it will require a robust defense. And that's why your academic paragraphs will always have more than three sentences, probably more than five. On some occasions, they may have more than 10, but not too much more than that. The form that this support takes is very often simply examples and explanations. That's what you are told when you first started writing paragraphs. But it can include a lot more than that, like descriptions and data, or comparisons and contrasts, or causes and consequences, and certainly analysis. And whatever you use as support, you will need to provide explanations or commentary. You need to explain what all that stuff means, not only so that your reader understands it, but also so that your reader will understand how it relates to or proves your topic sentence. So how do you structure this support material? There is a formulaic approach you may find useful to start with. It may look something like this. For more advanced writers, you want to avoid formulas. You want to go with a structure that best achieves the paragraph's purpose with this particular topic. And that's kind of where the art of paragraph writing comes in. Speaking of formulas, here's one that might be helpful. It's called the quote sandwich. You will likely be quoting the words of other people in your academic paragraphs. But you don't just toss a quote in, it needs to be sandwiched. A quote sandwich has three parts. The top slice of bread, the yummy stuff in the middle, and then the bottom slice of bread. You need to introduce your quote. That's the top slice of bread. In this quote, the introduction to the quote is religious scholar Kim Paffenroth says. Then comes the quote part of the quote sandwich. This is the meat, cheese, lettuce, and tomato part. And the bottom slice is an explanation or commentary. You explain what you think it means and how it's connected to your topic sentence. So that's a quote sandwich.
Sometimes you may need to alter a quote so as to avoid misinterpretation or to maintain clarity and conciseness. For this, you use ellipses and square brackets. These are punctuation marks that you use in quotations to indicate changes, additions, or clarifications that you made to the quote. Here's how you use them. Ellipses are used to indicate that a portion of the quoted text has been omitted while maintaining the integrity and the context of the original source. For example, this sentence includes the entirety of the original quote. This example shows that some words have been removed. Ellipses points are not made by going period, 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 but space, period, space, period, space, period, space. Square brackets indicate insertions or modifications. You use them to add your own words or make changes within a quote to provide clarity or context. This is often done to correct grammar, add capitalization, or replace a pronoun for clarity. In this first example, I add words to make the words of Julia Kristeva work within the structure of my sentence. In the second example, I have used brackets to deal with a capitalization rule. Now let's talk about how to format the titles of any works to which you will refer. Anytime you refer to the title of something, you must give it special treatment. If it's the title of a longer work, you italicize it. We're talking about big things, like books, five-act plays, movies, albums, newspapers, magazines. If you are writing it by hand, you don't italicize it, you underline it. So you italicize when you're typing, or underlined if you're handwriting, the titles of big things. You put the titles of shorter works in quotation marks. The smaller things. The titles of articles, short stories, poems, songs, and book chapters. They all go in quotation marks. Another thing about titles, the titles of big things and small things, you need to capitalize them properly. You need to capitalize the first word and the last word of every title. And then you need to capitalize all the major words in the title. Here are some examples. Titles of online sources, you need to use italics for web pages because they're a big thing. And put the title of articles in quotation marks because they're a small thing, a part of the big thing. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy is a website and it has all kinds of articles on it, including one that's entitled Zombies. The last sentence in your paragraph won't be a simple restatement of the topic sentence. It will be one of two other things. You can remind your reader what the purpose of the paragraph was, or you can use it to set up the next paragraph if this paragraph is a part of a larger essay. Or you could do both. I know this is quite a bit of information on just how to write a paragraph, but if you get all this stuff right, then your teacher can start giving you a lot more interesting and helpful feedback on how to improve your writing. And that's when things get really interesting. Doing your citations is important as well, and I have made a video to help you with those. And if you think you're ready for it, have a look at that video on unity and coherence. Thank you and happy writing.